waves. Remember waves from physics one? Back when physics was easy, the vectors only had two dimensions, right? So we did mechanical waves last year. So if I shake my hand over here, the, the, the spring is acting as the medium, and the spring is what the wave is traveling through to transfer the energy across the table, right? So we're going to look at another type of wave, an electromagnetic wave. So an electromagnetic wave is different in that it doesn't need a medium. So here, if there was no spring, right, and I do this, obviously nothing happens, right? That's stupid. This needs a medium to travel through, but an electromagnetic wave is different. Let's look at how electromagnetic waves are created. So I'm going to start with the simplest case. I have an AC source, and it's connected to these two wires, right? And this AC source, even though it's not connected to a circuit, right, it's still creating a potential difference in the wire, right? It doesn't have to be connected to do that because this creates a voltage that gets bigger and then gets smaller and then bigger in the other direction and smaller, and it keeps doing this, right? So let's look at what happens when this thing starts pushing current up. Right? So it's going to start with a small voltage and then it starts pushing the current up and then it's going to go down and go the other way and then flip, right? So let's look at just the up part. So when it goes up, I know that positive charge is going to get pushed up here, right? Because of conventional current and negative will go down here, right? Because thanks Ben Franklin, he had one job and he screwed it up. So if that current goes up and pushes positive up here, that creates an electric field, right? That electric field is going to look like that. So that electric field points down from positive to negative. So as that current gets bigger, that field, that electric field gets larger, and that electric field around in the wire propagates out in all directions. Imagine throwing a rock in a pond and the wave spreads out. Same thing happens, right? So this electric field is going to get bigger and bigger. I'm just going to look at going this way. So it's going to start small, and then it's going to get larger and larger and larger until it finally hits a maximum value. And then... When the current, I'm sorry, when the voltage starts decreasing to go the other way, then it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, right? And so it kind of looks like the top part of a sine curve, the bottom part, I should say. Let's look at the magnetic field that creates, that gets created now. So current pointing up, right? Magnetic field, I can use my right hand rule to curl one to figure out the direction of the magnetic field. So from your perspective, right, if I point my thumb up for the current, then the magnetic field should be pointing into the page from your perspective. So if you can't see this, pause the video and try this until you can. So you should be able to take your right hand and thumb pointing up and your fingers on this side of the wire will point into the page from your perspective, right? So at me. So pause it if you can't see it. Make sure you can see that. So that magnetic field is going to change because of Ampere's law, right? If current increases, Magnetic field is going to increase also, and also because of Maxwell's equations, right? Changing fields create each other, right? So this magnetic field is going to kind of look like this, but it's going to be pointing into the page from your perspective, right? So it'll look kind of like this. Okay, I know that's terrible drawing, but imagine from your perspective, the electric field is pointing down, and the magnetic field is pointing into the page. So it kind of looks like that, but it's head-on, right? So this is what it looks like when the current goes up. But remember, that current's going to go up, and it's going to create a field that gets bigger, and then it's going to turn around and go backwards. So what happens when the current starts going the other way, right? Well, let's look at that. So same thing. Follow me here. Current points down, right? So the current was going up. Now it's going to come back down and go down to a maximum negative value, right? So that current going down creates an electric field. That electric field, as the current gets bigger, the electric field also gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right? And then it turns around and gets smaller and smaller and smaller and goes back to zero. So that electric field is the blue one. The magnetic field now, if I take your right hand, right? Thumb pointing down. You should see from your perspective, the field on this side is pointing out of the page at you, right? So on this side of the end of the page. So again... This, this is happening in all directions, going out like dropping a rock in a pond in a circle, right? I'm just looking at this way. So my field is pointing out of the page from your perspective, right? And you see how it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller? So that's basically what's happening. As the current goes up and gets smaller, it does this. And as the current goes down and goes back, it gets like this, right? So I could do this even with one charge. If I took one charge and just did this and moved it up and down, made it accelerate, this would happen. So let's throw all this together and kind of look at what it looks like. Okay, so it kind of looks like this. So what's happening is my electric field is in the plane of the page, 
and my magnetic field is from your perspective, right? It's going out of the page and then into the page, out of the page, into the page, out of the page, into the page, right? And so these two things are at 90 degrees to each other and they're self-propagating because electric fields create magnetic fields and magnetic fields create electric fields, right? So all that happened from charges moving up and down that creates these two fields that interact and like make each other propagate, right? So the way to figure out the direction just by looking at the field, so that's a question you might see sometimes, is like here's these electromagnetic fields, which way is the wave traveling? Is to use something called the pointing vector. We're not gonna calculate this, right? Because it's a cross product, but you can use this to figure out the direction because the velocity of the electromagnetic wave is gonna be the cross product of the electric and the magnetic fields, right? So again, when you do cross products, you cross the first vector is your thumb, your second vector is your fingers, and then when you cross them, that gives you the vector, right? That's the direction. So if I take my electric field, and like, let's look it over here. This one's easier, no, this one's easier to do. So my electric field pointing down Right, I would take my thumb, point it down, and my magnetic field is from your perspective pointing into the page. Right, so if you line up your thumb pointing down and point your fingers into the page, when you cross them, boom, there's your velocity. Right, okay, let's go look over here. If I take my thumb, which is my electric field, and point it up, and I put my magnetic field out of the page from your perspective, right, it looks like this, boom, cross them, it looks like that. So you can see what's happening. These vectors are just doing this, and the velocity is always pointing in the direction of motion, right? And so all it's doing is going like that, and the velocity is always going. And so electromagnetic waves, what creates them is basically any charge moving, right? Here I used an AC source, right? This is like the example from your book. But it could be just taking, like, you can't grab a proton, but if you take a proton and you shake it like that, that'll happen. So I'm going to leave you with uh, a simulation because this is not the greatest drawing. I'm going to leave you with a simulation to, that shows a better example of what I'm talking about instead of me trying to draw. Okay, so here's the simulation. I got an antenna and I can move an electron up and down like I was showing you. And let me put this on oscillate so it looks better, right? And so when it moves, it creates this electric field in the green and that electric field is what travels out in space and it can interact with other things and that's what carries the energy from like this electron over here to this electron in this antenna right and that's how low energy electromagnetic waves work right so this wouldn't work for like x-rays or gamma rays or uh, high energy stuff like that right because the size of the antenna is going to matter so you can't make an antenna that small to make one this is how like radio waves and microwaves stuff like that work and so again i was talking about how we only look at it going in one dimension right but in reality this is what the wave looks like so that electron moving creates a field that propagates in all directions so you can see some going there and you can watch it going here right and then you can see another one coming down this way right so it looks like you dropped a rock in a pond and it ripples out and it goes out in all dimensions but we only ever really look at it as going one way just to make it easier Right, so this is how, this is the basic way electromagnetic waves are produced, right? There's a bunch of other ways we'll eventually get to, but this is the simple way low energy electromagnetic fields are created.